Okay. All righty. Let's go ahead and uh, and we'll kick this off here. Okay, I'm going to put, let's see, I'm going to put a Slido link into the chat here. Just grab that link really quick. That's not the link I wanted. That's the link I think I want. Let's see here. Okay. And I'll put that in there again if more people come in. I'll, uh, but for now, if you all want to take a chance to click on that, um, and then you can go to the Q&A section. Um, and then you can, you know, as, we, as we're talking and as we're doing things, if you have a question you want to put it in there, we'll come back around to Slido and get you in there. Um, okay. So, well, again, welcome. We have two of our alums from the back end program here with us today. We have Sylvia and we have Jada. And uh, let's see, Jada, I, I'll, well, I'll let you all introduce yourselves. Um, but they were, we went through this program. They were some of the first to go through it. Uh, and I've, I've known these two for, well, I've known Jada. I was, I was her first instructor as I recall, isn't that? Yeah. And so we were there for the beginning and then Sylvia, her and I have had plenty of conversations. Um, both are absolutely wonderful to talk to. You're going to get a lot of insights from these two. Um, just a little introduction by introduction. I'll just introduce myself. To anybody who's come in, my name is Byron, uh, Byron McKay. I uh, was an instructor when I first started here at Bloom Tech. Um, I saw, I was there, there when we first started the backend program, which was really exciting. And then since then, I've kind of, my roles morphed and changed a little bit here and there. And now I uh, am a curriculum lead. So I do a lot of the, uh, I, I watch all of your feedback that you submit. I see it. I try my best to respond to it and, and make changes as needed. And so that's kind of what I'm doing now. Before Bloom Tech, um, I did some backend. I did a lot of mobile development, um, a lot of those kinds of things. So if anyone's ever interested in that, um, let me know. Um, I'm also the same guy that did the unit one videos. So if you remember me from those, this is me in real life. That was me. You know, I, I, I can always say that was a younger version of me. And now I'm here, but you know, it wasn't that really that long ago, to be honest. But anyway, those were really fun to make. I hope you enjoyed them. But of course, if there's something where you're like, Byron, you totally missed the mark here. Just let me know. Cause now I'm in position to change that kind of stuff. So anyway, enough about me. You're not here to talk about, to, to listen to me talk. You're here to listen to Sylvia and Jada. So I'm going to pass it over to, uh, let's start with Sylvia. Let's start with you. Um, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Um, talk a little bit about where you are now, where you were before Bloom Tech, and take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Byron. Hi, everybody. My name is Sylvia, and I have graduated from Bloom Tech's backend development program actually just last month. Um, I'm currently working as a junior backend developer for a startup company called GridCure, and my role is really about wearing many hats actually um, I started back in August and it's been quite an interesting ride um, because I've had the opportunity to learn various new skills um, a, a very different tech stack than what I learned in school which is great um, it's always good in my opinion to kind of broaden your horizons and before I went, before I started at Bloom Tech in January, I was working as an executive assistant for one of the, the hospitals in the area during COVID times, which of course was crazy in itself. And I just realized that it was time for a change. I'd been thinking about it for a long time and um, Bloom Tech kept coming up on my radar and had been for a number of years, actually. Um, it was formerly Lambda at the time when I was looking at it. And the backend development program at Bloom Tech just really spoke to me. Um, so I ended up coming to Bloom Tech in January and graduating early with a job in backend development. Yes, you did. And that was a lot of fun because you and I had a lot of conversations about that whole process. Tell me a little bit. Well, well, actually, I'll come back to that in a little bit. I want to kind of talk about that job search that you did because it's a little. It was definitely something that most of the grads 
uh, have a slightly different experience than you had. So I'd be curious to kind of touch on that. Uh, okay. But before we do that, uh, let's hop over to Jada. Jada, tell us a little bit about yourself. What are you doing now? Where were you before? Where are you at? Where are you located? And and something fun about yourself. What do you got? So, hey guys, um, my name is Jada. I graduated from Bloom Tech um, a month ago. Um, and before Bloom Tech, actually, I, I was just in high school. So I came into Bloom Tech straight out of high school because I, I knew I liked computer science. I had been like involved in a lot of programs with computer science and I decided that, you know, rather than waiting for years to get out in the real world and, you know, gain experience with that, I decided to instead, you know, find a faster route. Um, so I did my research and I came across Bloom Tech and like, I thought it was a great opportunity. So I went ahead and did it um, and it turned out great, um, obviously. Right now I'm working um, at Amazon. I'm currently in New York and I work on the team that manages advertising accounts. So yeah, pretty cool. And that's straight out of high school. I mean, that's such a that's such a leap of faith <laughs> to put in yourself. That's amazing. Yes, was, sure. I mean, I don't know what kind of conversation that was like with your peers or your parents, but like that's amazing. What a uh, you know, as yeah, some of you may know this program is not, uh, it, it's challenging, what I'm trying to say, and and to do come out of high school and to, to pull it off, and now you're at Amazon. Yeah. And the program was nine months, and, you know, it was even a full year, and you're already where so many, uh, you know, would love to be, as far as engineers go. Um, I personally have never worked at Amazon or any of the FANG companies or the main company, now that Facebook is meta. Uh, but it's always, and all of us developers always talked like, if you just worked at one of those places, like you can basically write your ticket, right? Um, and, and and it's great. It's just, it's it's amazing that you're already there. Um, both of you, I mean, one person, you know, Sylvia was an executive assistant, Jada was from high school, like this is totally different backgrounds, but they've really, they've really uh, embraced the challenge. And now you're just in such a such a fun space, so a fun space, a fun career. Um, I think it's a fun career, obviously. Um, and I know you guys are going to have a lot of great experiences going forward. Um, all right, uh, let's see. We we already have one question here in the Slido. I'm going to go ahead and just ask this one now. This one's going to be to Jada, uh, and the question is: um, Being so young in the field, have you had any trouble being heard within your team for on account of your age? Um, so actually, no, the really cool thing is so far, my team has been really welcoming. Um, you know, I haven't, you know, felt any different because of my age or because of how young I am. Um, and there's um, a couple of, you know, interns on my team, too. So it's kind of like, you know, they're used to having young people on the team. So it's, I don't really get treated any different, to be honest. And I have a mentor who really helps me understand everything. So it's pretty, pretty cool. That's awesome. Great question. Um, and there's a follow up as someone who plans uh, on interviewing with Amazon in the future. Uh, Jada, can you talk about your interviewing experience and any tips that you may have? Yeah, so my interviewing experience was pretty good. Um, I, I would say that, you know, I definitely focused a lot on not only the technical side, but the behavioral because in Amazon, they really um, hold close to their leadership principles. And it's really important to show that, you know, through your experiences to show that you could be a leader at Amazon. So um, my tip would definitely be to look over, you know, if you're interested in Amazon, look over their leadership principles. But for the um, interview process in general, I would say definitely practicing, 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 you know, daily practicing your code and practicing, you know, those behavioral questions. Um, there's many you could find online that will definitely help you. Um, and also like time yourself because there's a lot of you know time questions you have to complete assessments within a time limit i would say it's also good to time yourself to make sure you're working at a good pace so you get used to that you know if you do end up having a timed interview that's awesome that's all such good advice and, and stuff i could 
uh, I can tell everyone here that's that's golden right there. That's exactly what you want to do. Let's stick with the job search, but now let's go to Sylvia. So Sylvia, you had a little different experience with your job search. Tell us a little bit about that process and what you went through. Yes, my job search was indeed a little different. Uh, I took the approach of putting myself out there. Um, I was specifically looking for work that would allow me to be mobile, or I should say to work remotely all the time. So um, that was one big ticket item for me. And so I sought out jobs that fit that bill. And I mainly um, started with LinkedIn and networking with folks on LinkedIn that uh, either maybe from alumni that I'd met at Bloom Tech or maybe who are currently working for an organization that I was interested in working in and just really sticking my neck out there and asking people for some time just to pick their brain um, on opportunities within the company. I spent a lot of time researching what it meant to create a good resume. Um, and Bloom Tech has so much support to help you get there as well. Um, so definitely those resources came in handy. And it was just about like Jada had mentioned to um, really getting comfortable and practicing those interview questions, whether they be behavioral or technical and um, keep applying for jobs because you really never know what's gonna come at you and you often get surprised. Um, I found that by creating a solid LinkedIn profile, I actually had recruiters reach out to me, which was really fun. Um, so it's definitely worth putting in the time investment and using the resources at Bloom Tech to make sure that you build yourself a nice portfolio and spend time networking. Yeah. And you will get those recruiters for the rest of your life reaching out to you now. That's just how it goes. It'll just never stop. Um, <laughs> I still get people asking me to do, I think one time I put some obscured scale that I learned and that people still reach out to me occasionally be like, can you do this for us? It was like a full-time job, like, <laughs> buddy. No. <laughs> so yeah, welcome to the club. Now recruiters are going to be picking you forever. Super fun. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit. Um, well, here, we have a question here, actually. Let's go ahead and talk. Let's go ahead and do this question because it goes right into what I want to talk about next, uh, which is just the program here. Let's first talk about, uh, Let's. this question is, what would you say to someone thinking about starting the backend program at Bloom Tech? Uh, Jada, let's bounce back to you and, and have you answer that first. What would you say to somebody who's thinking, I want to do back in or I want to do some tech back in program at Bloom Tech? What would you say? Um, some advice I would give is to definitely go and do research of your own because, you know, there's activities provided and there's, you know, um, guided lessons, which are great, but, you know, to not only rely on those, but go outside and, you know, search new topics and concepts and, you know, um, go deeper into, you know, what you um, learned in those guided activities, what you learned with the instructor. I think that will definitely help you get familiar with not only, you know, the concepts, but the meaning behind them, how to use certain tools and techniques. I think that really helps a lot. Yeah, that's absolutely true. You, you've got all these resources here, but there's still so much to learn and grasp that we can't say we put everything into this program, right? There's a lot of things to go explore outside. That's great. Sylvia, what would you say? Yeah, I would um, piggyback off of Jada with that comment as well. Um, something else that I would say to somebody who is interested in the backend development program at Bloom Tech would be um, because school is virtual, um, it can be a little bit isolating. And so it's super important to make friends and have those study buddies and people that you can bounce ideas off of um, and really develop relationships with because it's a, the program is, it's challenging, um, but it is so rewarding. And having a team of people that you can work with closely and build friendships with just makes everything that much more fun and 
and that much more manageable as well. So I would say that's also really important is to establish some relationships with your teachers too. Um, you know, don't be afraid to use those resources and to make friends. That's great. That's great. That's yeah. I couldn't agree more. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. I have another question coming in here. Um, oh, okay. What advice would you give to a student that is in their first week? Okay. So you already talked a little bit about the networking, talked a little bit about other resources. First week you've come into the program. You just got all this information, you know, going your way. What would you, uh, what would you say, Sylvia, let's, let's stick with you. And, and then we'll go to Jada. What would you say advice to a student that's in their first week? Their first week. Holy, I am trying to remember what that even like. <laughs> There's a lifetime ago, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, first week, get yourself settled. Um, really take the time to make sure that your, your device is set up, that you have the programs that you need. Um, you're, everybody's going to run into kinks, but as I recall, that's sort of what that first week was like, was like, okay, let's make sure that everybody's organized and you've got the, you know, programs and software that you need on your machine to be successful for the course moving forward. Um, try to start thinking about a routine for yourself. Um, get comfortable with the curriculum. I believe in your first week, you do get an overview of a curriculum and then you'll start to get a sense for what your days are looking for. Um, but I think it's really important right out of the get-go to make sure that you build yourself a routine. And what I mean by that is uh, take time for yourself too. You're going to find the days can be really long and it's important to remember to take care of yourself. So if you like you know, going to yoga class or walking your dog or whatever, make, make sure you carve out time for that in your day too, to, to, um, to take the time to do those things that you enjoy as well. So I would say start building a routine and get comfortable with your environment and with your, with the tools that you have. That's awesome. Jada, anything you would add to that? Um, yeah, I, Sylvia said it great. I definitely agree with that. Um, and then, you know, just exploring all the resources that are available to you, um, like where you would go if you have a certain question or, you know, um, with career coaching hours. I know it's early, but, you know, just exploring all the resources that, you know, Bloom Tech does provide helps a lot. And to not be afraid to, you know, start reaching out, talking to your peers, because, you know, they're starting as off as well, just as you, and it can be overwhelming. Um, like Sylvia said, it is important to, you know, take time for yourself to, you know, get used to the flow of things and, you know, make a schedule for yourself, but, you know, don't be afraid. Don't think it's too early to reach out um, and, you know, talk to your peers, get to know them, you know, get to know the people who you'll be going through the program with. That can help a lot. That's awesome. I love that you brought up that just reaching out to all these resources because there are a lot, right? Sylvia said, get your environment set up, you know, start building that network. And like Jay said, reach out to these people, these other resources. There's so many things here uh, at Bloom Tech that, that are offered that it's great to just get your, you know, get a feel for it all and know, okay, these are the people I can talk to. This is the, these are my go-to, you know, resources. Um, that's great. That's really great. Um, Okay, before I go to any more questions, I'm just going to stick around here a little bit in the in the program. Then I'll get come back to some questions for a second. Question for both of you: um, What? I have two two questions for you. What did you most like? Uh, what What did you like most about the back end program? And what was your biggest challenge in the program? Okay, uh, Sylvia, let's start with you on that. What was your? Uh, what did you like most about the program? I really liked the curriculum of the overall program. Um, I think Jada talked a little bit about, you know, doing research and, and looking beyond the walls of Bloom Tech for what's going on out in the world. And um, I thought that this particular program does a really great job of covering some very um, strong basis out there that 
many organizations are looking for in backend developers. Um, so I felt like the curriculum was really well laid out to pinpoint some of these major, major points that organizations are looking for when they're hiring. Um, I also thought that the guided projects, a lot of them were really fun and interactive. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's really easy to get lost in the code and you sort of forget what the real life world example is that we're talking about. Um, but the instructors do a good job and the curriculum does a good job of making sure that you haven't lost the forest through the trees, so to speak. Um, so I appreciated that. And I believe part two of the question was, uh, what biggest was the challenge? Yeah. Biggest challenge. Um, I would say one of the greatest challenges was the, the timing. And what I mean by that is it is a nine month program. The curriculum is fantastic, but things do move quickly. And so that's why I alluded to finding your groove, finding your routine and carving out time for yourself because things do move fast. And I did find it challenging at times um, to keep up with the material, but eventually I actually created a strategy for myself um, that I found really helpful to balance my days with at Bloom Tech, which was if I had an opportunity to actually get ahead in the curriculum or, or read ahead in some of the material and, and get through some of that pre-work, um, I, I felt like I had a better handle on or more control of, of the day, I guess, more control of um, the pace. And I also felt more prepared to come with questions um, in class. So find a strategy that works for you. But yes, I did find at times the pace could be a little bit challenging. Uh, but again, the resources were always there. If you ever, you know, run into blockers, you could reach out to your, your instructor or teammates or um, learner's assistance. So there's definitely resources out there to help with those things too. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Jada, same questions. What did you like most about the program and what was your biggest challenge? Yeah, um, for sure. I did like, like um, Sylvia said, I did like the setup of the curriculum, how there was a pre warm up and then there was the guided project activity. And then you had a part of the unit assessment, um, unit project, sorry, um, that was broken up into different sprints. So I really liked the way it, it was organized. Um, and I also liked um, specifically since, you know, now I'm at Amazon, I liked um, gaining experience working with AWS tools, um, how that was also integrated in the projects and activities. Cause, you know, now coming in, um, you, you know, have some familiar, um, I'm pretty familiar with the tools, you know, some of the tools that they use at Amazon um, and also like the real world um, guided project activities, you know, they always connected to, like Sylvia said, a broader real world um, objective. So I really um, enjoyed, you know, having that experience, you know, not only coding a fun project. Yes, there was some fun, but there were some that had to do with, you know, real world objectives, which I really enjoyed. Um, and my biggest challenge, I would say, is, yeah, definitely retaining all the information that um, I was learning and getting. Um, it could definitely be a challenge organizing all that and, you know, remembering um, certain concepts, especially when it got a bit more difficult. Um, you know, it, it was a challenge, I'm not going to lie, but definitely kind of, you know, I think it helps to write notes, you know, cause that you could definitely look back at them. That helped me a lot, you know, just writing down notes, you know, what this concept was, what this does, you know, stuff like that, that really did help me organize a lot. Um, and just, you know, making sure you plan out your time really well. Um, Bloom Tech really does help with that, you know, with breaking down the unit project in different sprints, but, you know, just making sure that you plan your time really well, that you're writing down notes um, with, when you get, you know, introduced to new concepts that might be more difficult, that can definitely help a lot. Yeah, it really can. I mean, there's even, uh, 
there was even a couple of topics that I wasn't as familiar with or that I've always kind of conveniently avoided. <laughs> and just going back through it again, as we were putting everything together, uh, taking those notes and kind of, you know, help really helped me a lot as well. And just to, uh, just to kind of give some context to everybody here, uh, Jada and Sylvia both went through this program when before it was the more flexible model that we have now. Um, so to Jada's point, if something is is not quite making sense, like you have that time to kind of sit and really go through it, make sure you have it down really, uh, you know, really well. There's no, uh, you know, there's, there's no big deadline, you know, date coming up. that's going to cause you to have to go back and retake a, a, a you know, a couple sprints. Um, so yeah, you can really take those time and, and to emphasize on top of that, what you both said about just managing your time. Well, that's probably even more critical now than it was before. It's just managing your time and kind of getting those, taking those uh, extra planning steps to just, you know, figure out, well, okay, how many hours this week can I put in? What am I going to accomplish? And those kinds of things. And there are the pace groups for that that, we, that we're offering and um, and a couple other things as well, I'm sure. So um, thank you for those, for kind of touching on, on those. Uh, let's see, we have a couple of questions here. So I'm going to start at the very top with the most upvoted question right now. Um, how many applications did you send out and how many interviews did you have before you accepted an offer? So these are job applications, not coding applications. So uh, Sylvia, let's go with you. How many job applications did you send out and how many interviews did you have? Um, hmm. I don't really remember how many I sent out uh, a lot. I was probably sent out, I'm gonna guess like somewhere in the world of 50 maybe more. I'm not sure. How many interviews did I get? Uh, I ended up getting three interviews. They all happened like within the same sort of two weeks, um, which was kind of crazy. And um, I ended up accepting one of them, obviously, because I am now employed. It still feels really good to say that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely like the job search, and I'm not sure how it looks with the uh, flex curriculum that Bloom Tech has implemented now, um, but the job search for me, I treated it like a part-time job and um, just really read up a lot on the, on the companies that I was applying to and um, tried to tailor my resume a little bit if I could, if it made sense. Um, so yeah, I definitely put a lot of job applications out there. I have, since I've accepted this position, I have gotten um, a couple more invitations for interviews that I haven't taken because I'm I'm quite happy with where I'm at right now. But uh, so I guess in reality, I could say I had five callbacks, which is pretty awesome. Like I said, the recruiters are always going to come asking. <laughs> yeah, it's you know you got to celebrate those little wins for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There you go. Very good. Yeah, and a part-time job that is really kind of what that stage of it all kind of feels like, doesn't it? Because it really, it, you know, it's leading it to that job. So yeah, that that makes that's a good uh, good way of looking at it. Jada, how many interviews applications did you have? Um, as far as applications, yeah, it was definitely a lot. I just went on LinkedIn. I went searching those keywords and I really applied to like everything that I saw that, you know, fit, um, fit you know, where I was a beginner Java developer. So it was definitely a lot. I'm not even sure I can put a number on it. Um, but as far as interviews, um, I got around three before um. I got the Amazon offer. Um, yeah, I had about three, but definitely the job search, it was it was definitely interesting. Um, I just applied to everything really, you know, anything that met my skills or even close to it, I would just apply to based on the requirements and, you know, definitely made sure my LinkedIn, my GitHub page, you know, they were all up to date, that they all look good. Um, and one thing I would have done um, going back is probably starting it earlier, you know, because like 
it's never too early really to start the job search to look into what these companies are looking for you know so as you go throughout the program you're familiar with you know what you need to put more emphasis on you know where you need to put more focus on you know while you're doing going throughout the program so i think that would definitely help a lot would have helped me a lot um but it was definitely a good experience i would say well good yeah it's, it's like you said it's never too early you can always start sooner if you want um and, and you mentioned a lot of things like both of you did about your linkedin and keeping up all of the you know your githubs and things like that and there's a whole job search section at the end that really helps you polish those those resources up so that when it's when you're when you're doing the job search all those things are ready to go um all right next question let's see we got do do you do extra projects besides the projects in the curriculum for job hunting so side projects personal projects anything like that i'll let's see uh, uh, Sylvia, let's let's go back to you. Did you do any extra side projects? What did you or any other? I know there's something. There's, there might have been something else you learned outside of this <laughs> curriculum. What what do you got? Yeah, I I actually now that I think of it, I have a side project going that I haven't looked at in months. Um, so yes, I do think there is definitely value add in uh, drumming up a side project that you could showcase your skills with. Something else that I decided to do um, was to learn another language. I wanted to make myself versatile in the job search. And I had also pinpointed a couple of organizations that I was interested in working for. And I sort of sifted out what their top priorities were. And one of the things that came up was Ruby and Ruby on Rails. So. I decided to learn Ruby um, and Ruby on Rails uh, during my summer break at school. So I thought that that was awesome because if you do some reading about it, you'll find that um, Java is such a great starting point. It's such a well-rounded language. It's so widely used. And I think that um, you'll find once you get that under your belt, it is easier to pick up on other languages as well after that. And it's, um, you know, it's no different than speaking English and also learning French or Spanish, you know, it, it just, it just widens your opportunities a little bit. So I went that route. That's great. Yeah. That's it, that learning that, that second language is really interesting to kind of your point. You just, you know, Java, you know how it all works and you go something like Ruby and it's, so much not like java but at the same time there's a lot of similarities you start to kind of pick up okay like i see what they're sharing i see what they're not and you, you can you appreciate them both it's not that one's better than the other although there would be opinions out there i'm sure but you know you can appreciate right what they both do jada how about you any extra projects outside of just the curriculum um yeah i actually did um there were not not all of them were too advanced. It was just simple personal projects um, after probably a unit um, that implemented the concepts I learned to make sure that, you know, I had them down pack um, and I would just make my own personal project from there. Um, and as far as, you know, um, going beyond what I was learning in Bloom Tech, um, I know that I noticed that data structures and techniques were a big thing with a lot of companies um, to know during your interviews. So I would just, you know, research more on things like trees and graphs and traversals, stuff like that, and watch videos on them too, to, you know, learn more techniques and go more in depth with them as well. That's great. That's great. Yeah, it's always fun to see somebody else to watch other people. Once you know kind of how something works, you watch somebody else do it and you're like, well, why are they doing it like that? And what's going on here and there? You start just so many different ways to do it. Um, it's always good to see those. And one thing I want to kind of come back to it on Sylvia's point was that uh, she looked at the company she wanted to work at and figured out what skills they wanted. I think that's essential, really. If, you, if there is a company that you want to work for that you just have your heart set on, Go do that research. It will really pay off. Do the little extra work that you need to do. And that shows. That shows in interviews. Even if you're not a Ruby on Rails expert in a company that uses Rails, just the fact that you are picking it up and learning it, they'll see that. They'll, they'll recognize that and they'll reward you, hopefully, for it. Um, awesome. 
All right. There are lots of questions here. So I'm just going to keep going down the list. This is great. Um, next question is, do you recommend some other courses such as Coursera, Udacity, or YouTube before starting the program? And what's the recommended background? Okay. Now I have some thoughts on this too, but I'm going to hand it off to, uh, to both of you first. Um, let's see, Jada, I'm going to stick with you on this one. Do you recommend any courses before starting the program? And tell us, you know, what do you think? Uh, well, let's start with that part of the question first. Let's, let's kind of two part halves here. So any, anything you recommend before starting this program to, pre to prepare? Um, I would, I mean, I would definitely recommend um, looking into the course that you're interested in and seeing the things you're going to learn um, and going, looking those up on watching videos on them and, you know, getting familiar with it. Um, but personally, I didn't do any like courses like Coursera or any of those before starting Bloom Tech. Um, but I think it would be good to, you know, gain, have that knowledge beforehand, you know, before going into it. That can help you a lot to not feel too overwhelmed. Um, sorry, I can't recommend any like specific courses, um, but I think that would be helpful. Awesome. Yeah, getting some just some familiarity there. That's a good place to start, I think. Sylvia, how about you? Any recommendations? Um, the Code Code Academy actually has a really good Java fundamentals course. Um, you know, if you're considering joining the backend development program at Bloom Tech, I'm not sure if. Um, I seem to recall Byron before I went into the program, I I had to take a course through Code Academy. Was that correct? Uh, usually, yeah, there's a, there's a recommended course to take that's okay. through Code Academy. Um, I'm honestly not quite sure how, re how required it is. Yeah. Uh, it, it may have changed, uh, since, since you did it, but there is a course that we do recommend that is a good kind of gets your, your feet wet, gets you started. So when you come in, you are, like we said before, you're more familiar with the concepts and they're, you know, they should, it shouldn't be such a, you know, surprise when you come into the program. Okay. Well, regardless of if it's required or not, um, to answer the question, I did find it helpful because it does give you those foundational skills. And then going into the program, you've got those kind of to stand on, like you've got a leg to stand on going in. So I did find that helpful. And um, I would recommend that to anybody who's planning to take the backend development course, knowing that this is a, a we're going to be learning Java. Um, so I would, I would say that was an awesome course and that was through code Academy. Awesome. And the, the last the second half of the question, as far as the recommended background, um, I don't recall, I don't, aside from even before the Coursera or the code Academy course, um, what was your, both your background with code? Like how much familiar, how much did you use code much before? Were you coming in kind of fresh? Um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about that? Sylvia, let's start with you on that one. I had play, I had played around with some code. Um, I was familiar with HTML and CSS. Um, that's, you know, more front end kind of stuff. And then I started to just read up on like, what's going on behind the scenes here? Like what's happening? What's, what's the bigger picture looking like? And that's what really sparked my interest in backend development. So um, in terms of like background, there wasn't really a whole lot there other than just some technological or some, some curiosity, I should say, and, uh, just some really like foundational, foundational ground work that was laid. So just a little bit of curiosity, a little bit of this looks interesting. And that was it. There you go. Jada, Jada, how about you? Yeah, honestly, same as Sylvia. Um, but I did do um, some programs and courses actually throughout high school. Um, 
but it was more centered around front end development. I was more familiar with HTML, CSS, um, JavaScript, um, more front end development. And actually it was the same thing. Like I was like, oh, what's going on behind the scenes? And you know, that sparked my curious curiosity in back end development. And I'm like, why not, you know, try out this course and see how much I like, you know, the back end, because I was really interested and curious to know, you know, what's going on behind the visuals and everything. There you go. So a little bit of know-how, a little bit of know-how, a lot of curiosity. There's the recipe. Here are two successful grads telling you this. That's that's good enough for me. I think that's great. All right, next question. Did you find it important to find certifications in addition to Bloom Tech to excel in interviews and land your job? Or is excelling at Bloom Tech enough? That's an interesting question. Um, there are lots of certifications out there you can take. Um, and you know, Bloom Tech obviously offers our, our own, uh, but was there any extras? Did you guys feel like you needed any extra beyond just that? Um, Jada, let's start with you on that one. What are your thoughts? Um, I didn't feel like I needed any, any extra certifications. Um, I actually hadn't looked into that too much. Um, it was really just Bloom Tech, um, the education, all I had, and I was pretty confident enough in like, you know, doing the job search from there. So I didn't really look into any certification programs. Cool. Sylvia, how about you? Um, I guess for me, as I had mentioned earlier, when I was looking at specific jobs that I wanted to apply for, any additional certifications um, would have had to do with, you know, learning an additional language or some other skill that was that highly sought after for that job. Um, but like Jada said, I felt really confident with having Bloom Tech's certificate behind me because it covers such a breadth of really important skill. Um, so I, I felt that that was definitely sufficient for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. All right, this next question, uh, let's see, this next question here is for Jada. What were the steps in the interview process at Amazon and how Java focused was the technical screening? So the um, first step, the initial step was we had to take an online assessment um, and it had two parts. One part was where you do coding technical problems and it was about for 90 minutes, I believe, but you had to complete two questions within 90 minutes. Um, and it was on a platform similar to Hanker, Hank, Hacker Rank, if you guys ever use that website. Um, and then the next part, um, it was part two of the assessment was more behavioral focus. So you get example emails, um, as if you know you were on actually on the job and you had to respond in you know a specific manner you know it would you would have kind of multiple choice and it would see how you respond based on the emails that you got the emails as if you were on a typical day at the job um, so that was the first part and then the next part was the three hour interview loop um, and it was with three different Amazon interviewers so for each interviewer they would first well, based on how they did it, they asked a behavioral part where it centered around the leadership principles and they would ask stories like, um, how would you respond this way? Or if your manager, how did you respond in a certain event? And you'd have to show that, you know, at least one leadership principle, actually probably two in your response. Um, and then they would um, have a technical part as well. They would give you a question and, um, it was, I was it, I think you did have to use Java, but yeah, the two questions that they did give me were Java focused. So you don't have to know a whole lot of Java, but just knowing your data structures and like your techniques um, is very important. It was very important for those. And knowing also how to write classes, the setup of classes and functions as well as important. Yeah, those interview process can be. I mean, you, you, I never think more about an email than when they ask me to respond to an email in an interview. It's just like, oh, here we go. Got to make sure I get this right. Um, so lots of steps there, but you know, we, that's, that's also something we prepare you for here 
with those data structures and those different kinds of questions they'll get. So, um, but yeah, it's a, it's quite the process, isn't it? You got to do all the technical challenges, behavioral and the interviews. It's, it's quite a bit. All right. Next question. Did the, did the curriculum and training prepare you for the jobs you got? Sylvia, let's go to you first. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I think something that I found to be really interesting uh, that I have recently learned, not only through the job search, but also at work, is um, how significant cloud computing is these days uh, in the world of backend development. And one of the really, well, several, I should say, of the really important pieces that Bloomtech gave us in the curriculum Jada had mentioned was um, Amazon Web Services and using those services and getting to know them um, because they are so widely used now in, in the job in the world out there. Um, so I would say that that has been Sorry, Byron, I've totally lost sight of the question. I just got all <laughs> excited about AWS and GCP and thinking know, about it's, the cloud. It's, it's hard and not to be online. excited about those things, right? It's just yeah. AWS, well, my mind just flies. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's there's fine. There's so many out there. So what was the question? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the question was, did, did, did all of this training prepare you for the job oh. that you now have? Yeah, so my point is, is the amount of time that we spent learning um, Amazon Web Services and the different services that there, that are offered was very, very valuable. So yes, absolutely, I would say so. Awesome, thank you. Jada, same question. Yeah, I 100% agree with Sylvia. Um, having that exposure to AWS definitely helped a lot. Um, and. Um, I would say working on a team, um, the structure of code reviews and, you know, making sure you have people who are reviewing your code, that's definitely very important because, um, yeah, it's definitely important to know how to work on a team, how it's structured to commit your changes and then go ahead and make code reviews for other people on your team to review and then you can merge your changes. It's very important to know how to do that, um, which kind of ties in, you know, to get commands that definitely helped a lot um, going through that process of, you know, committing changes and pushing them out. Um, it definitely helped a lot as far as working in a team setting and making sure that you know you're not breaking any code um, that you can deal with merge conflicts if they do arise that that helped a lot as well more on that side too dealing with merge conflicts is the best part of my job that's a <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah there's a lot of those things that definitely that uh that you do experience here i mean as a person who's a developer for 10 years everything I've seen here mimics what you see in the real, which always try to make it as real to life as possible. And so having, getting that practice in here over and over again, uh, is really essential. I, I think is essential. So I'm, I'm glad you brought all those, those, those things up, even if they're just, you know, just these little things you have to learn how to do, but they're important. They're important. They play a big role. All right. Um, so this next question, um, they said, sorry, if this was already answered, but what was your program experience prior to starting the program? And uh, we did answer, so I'm, I'm gonna, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna recap what you both said and you chime in when I get something wrong. So uh, the experience was fairly similar for both of you in that you knew a little bit, a lot of HTML, a lot of front end development, I'd say, but it, it kind of sparked the curiosity. And that curiosity kind of drove you to learn, to want to learn a little bit more about what there is there. And that's basically what you came in with. Um, Sylvia talked about taking the uh, Code Academy Java Fundamentals course before starting the program, um, and that's a great resource as well that we that we have that's available to you to anybody who's who's interested in the program. Um, but I would say that 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 kind of sums up your experience prior. Did I miss anything? Is that do do it justice? Awesome. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We've got about ten more minutes here. Um, so we'll just keep going. I think we'll, we might have enough time to get through all these. Okay, here we go. Um, as a backend student starting their first day today, what programs can I expect to use and how are they set up? 
I think this is one I'm going to first answer and then have you both chime in. So as a backend student, there's uh, two major things that you will want to make sure you have on your computer. One of those is a program called IntelliJ. Definitely need IntelliJ on your machine to write your code and, and build your projects. Um, you, if you just do a Google search for IntelliJ download, that's where you'll get the download. I mean, there's instructions in the orientation week as well on how to do just that. And then the other one is something called Git. And we might have heard us say Git a little bit here and there. Um, Git is something you'll use on the on your terminal. There are some other, uh, there are some programs I could help you with that, but we teach a lot of things in the terminal. So it's a, it's a good place to start um, to get really comfortable with those commands. Um, you can do a Google search for that one as well. Also in orientation, that, that process is lined out as well. So IntelliJ and Git. Are there any other programs that you would need to start, Sylvia, Jada? Is, am I missing anything? I think that might be it. To start, I think that's that about covers it. More to come later. We'll get into AWS and other things, but all that will come down the road. I think for starting, that's where all you'll need to have. Good question. Okay, did did Bloom Tech help you apply for jobs? Let's. How was that process for you both when it came to the job search? Um, Jada, let's start with you. What was what? How did how did Bloom Tech help you apply for the jobs that you applied to? Um, so yes, they definitely did help me apply to jobs. There was a, a whole unit um, dedicated to it. Um, and it definitely helped a lot. They helped me polish my resume, um, my LinkedIn as well, um, as well as my GitHub. Those were the three main um, profile pages that I need to make sure that, you know, were polished, that were nice for when recruiters saw them. Um, so they helped a lot with that. Um, there was a career coach who looked over it and we had one-on-ones to talk in depth about specific um, revises that I need to make or, you know, for advice and suggestions. Um, and then, you know, there was always a career coach that you can meet with, whether it's if you're going in an interview and you need tips or, you know, even if you have a job and, you know, talking about compensation and, you know, negotiating an offer, um, there was career coaches for that. So they definitely helped me um, with that job search. With the job search. Awesome. Thanks. Before I get to you, Sylvia, real quick, I just posted a meeting survey link. Everybody would just Take a moment between now and the end of this meeting, just click on that, have it open. You don't have to fill it out right now. Just have it open. You can fill it out afterwards if you like. Okay, Sylvia, how did Loom Tech help you with your job applications? I would say Jada nailed it. I mean, it's it's um, that checking with your career counselor, having those reviews of your um, artifacts that you're putting out there. So LinkedIn, GitHub. Um, what was the other one, Jada? LinkedIn, GitHub, your resume, obviously. Yeah. I think that's it. Um, I I found too it was really helpful to do mock interviews with classmates. Um, that was super helpful and really learning how to talk and communicate in an interview, especially in a coding interview, was really important. So that was helpful. Um, yeah, and like Byron had alluded to earlier, there's an entire uh, segment of the course that's totally dedicated to the job search. Um, also, I would pick Byron's brain all the time if I had, well, I bugged Byron continuously, like if I had questions or things I wasn't sure about, or, hey, like, what was your experience with, like, when it comes to this thing or whatever. So there's resources out there. And um, just don't be afraid to reach out and, and ask questions for sure. Those were fun conversations. I enjoyed those. Yes. Never bugged me. It was it was totally my pleasure to talk to you about those. Those was fun. All right. Next question. What? Oh, this is about the GCA. It's always a fun one. Hey, what average scores did you have on the GCA? And how do you think that translated to the technical interview requirement? That's a great question. I'm curious too. Uh, Sylvia, can we start with you on that one? Yes, average score for GCA. Well, I mean, the one thing I will point out that's important for the for this course that you should take seriously that I didn't until the end is you are given an opportunity to take a GCA every two weeks and do it. 
because it will help you get comfortable um, to learn the platform that you're working with, uh, being timed, like Jada had mentioned when she was practicing for interviews, she timed herself. Um, so it's not required that you have to do it every two weeks, but it's like a Bloom Tech gives you like a gentle nudge and, and do it because it will be helpful. Um, so my experience with that was that I started cranking out practice GCAs and going at it bi-weekly um, near closer to the end. And it was a little stressful for me because I wasn't used to the pressure yet. And so my average scores were not that great. Um, and then I realized I needed to really put in the time and get serious about it. And I remember thinking, man, I really wish I had started doing this months ago. So take that into consideration. Um, and then when it came to the interviewing process, um, typically when, you know, when a recruiter reaches out to you for an interview or invites you to do an interview, oftentimes you'll find that they'll ask you to take a GCA uh, for the organization. And so, yes, definitely important to get comfortable with that platform and practice. You can take practice ones. You can take a practice GCA every 48 hours or maybe 24 hours, I believe, too. Um, just officially, you have to wait two weeks before you can take it again. So highly recommend. There you go. Jada, how about you? How is that GCA? Yeah, for me too, honestly, my scores weren't amazing as well. Um, it would always be the first like two questions are breeze. And then once you get to questions like three or four, it was like, oh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I would definitely recommend taking the GCA um, when it's open, when it's available to you, because it does, like Sylvia said, help with getting used to your platform and getting used to, um, you know, if you're on a real coding interview, you know, um, being proctored on that. So I would recommend taking that. Awesome. I couldn't agree more. Take it early, take it often. It's a, it's a good practice. And you're right, that third and fourth question, they're a doozy. So yeah, it's good to get used to those kinds of questions coming your way. All right, we got three minutes. I have one more question I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to ask, it's kind of a combination of the two we have left. It has to do with kind of work-life balance um, and just like how many hours. Uh, I think, I'm not, well, yeah, let's just talk about work-life balance a little bit. How do you manage that while at Bloom Tech? How did you manage that in your career? Sylvia, you alluded to this a little bit with the walks and the dog uh, and those kinds of things. Um, is that something you, how do you find that today in your career? I'm still figuring it out. Um, you know, it was really kind of crazy to go from being a full-time student and then having a job. And then I remember on a Saturday morning, I was like getting ready to do homework. And then I was like, oh, wait, I don't have homework anymore because I'm... <laughs> I am now an employee. The strangest feeling ever, right? <laughs> Very weird. Um, but, you know, don't let that go to your head because when you're new in a job, there's the learning never stops. So I am once again, um, trying to figure out what my routine is in this, in this new job. Um, working remotely is is cool. It's fun. Um, it means that I get to be more creative with my schedule um, but there is work that needs to get done. So, and of course being new, it takes me a little longer to get it done. So trying to find that balance is really important. Um, work-life balance is very, very important. I, I'm a big advocate for that. And so, like I said, um, make sure you make yourself a priority because if you are all work and no play, you're, you're not going to enjoy the work. Um, and you're going to get tired. So make sure you take time to, to find that work-life balance for yourself. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's hugely imp important. It definitely is. Definitely is. Jada, any last words on that one? Yeah. Just adding a little bit on that, like Sylvia was saying, um, definitely while you're working, don't be afraid to take some breaks, not like huge breaks, but some short breaks in between because it can be frustrating sitting at a computer all day, just looking at all this code. And then it's even worse when you get a blocker and you're running into a problem. It can be very, very frustrating, but just take some time, step away from the computer. Maybe you go on a walk outside in your backyard, wherever it definitely helps to kind of clear your mind and then come back kind of refreshed and ready to 
you know, tackle on the problem definitely helps. It does. It's just walking away. I, I tell you, I've had so many times where I've been stuck. I walk away for like an hour. I come back and it's like the answer is right in front of me. I never saw it. It's the weirdest thing, but it happens. All right, Sylvia, Jada, it's great seeing you both. I'm so excited for you both and the next things that you're going to be doing. This has been so fun to get to talk to you again, to be in a meeting with you again. This is just great. Um, everybody, this is the end of this present of this event here. Thank you all for coming. It's been great having you all here. Great questions. Thank you all for the questions. Again, if you can just take the link there, the I'll, I'll drop the link here. So it kind of comes back to the top in case you missed it. There's just a quick survey link uh, that I we'd like you all to take. Uh, let's see, here it is. Meeting survey. Ooh, there it is. So if you don't mind hitting that link, taking that survey, that would help us out a lot. Okay. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you later. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you.